Familiar faces, now with power-ups and speed boosts. In the world of international espionage, it's cunning and innovation that gives you the upper hand. But today's agent has proven many times before that the best strategy is to use your, um, natural assets. That's right, it's Grey Spy from Spy vs. Spy. Um, gentlemen? Spies are awesome. Cool outfits, the smooth talk, the unbelievable gadgets have been subject of all forms of media including the infamous rag produced by the usual gang of idiots. Spy vs. Spy has been a cherished fixture in Mad Magazine since its introduction in 1961. Each issue featuring the monochromatic mercenaries mixing it up in a game of ingenuity, strategy, and sometimes just plain dumb luck. It's a trap! And though MAD will always be the home of Spy vs. Spy, its popularity has allowed it to infiltrate other medias. I think everyone remembers the hugely successful Mountain Dew ads, along with the stunning collision of live-action CG and I think even a little stop-motion techniques. They were just as funny and ingenious as the comics. You've got video games, board games, shorts on MAD TV, a kid-friendly version in MAD Jr., and a short-running Sunday comic strip. There's even been talk about producing a feature film starring Jim Carrey and Damon Wayans, which sounds to me like they were taking the white and black thing in the wrong direction. You know, you seem very familiar. Have we met before? Oh, you know, I, I'm just one of those black Germans that seems familiar to everyone. Hmm? Yes, our neighbors over the pond can boast that they have the suavest spy in pop culture, but America has the funniest spies uh, to ever be created by a Cuban immigrant. Yes, Spy vs. Spy creator Antonio Projas was born in San Juegos, Cuba in 1921. There he grew up into an award-winning illustrator for numerous local magazines and newspapers. He was also an outspoken objector to Castro, which he expressed in political cartoons. Naturally, Projas was blackballed out of every publication he worked for. Also fearing for his life, Projas fled to America, where he would spend his first days laboring in a clothing factory. Job bearable, but unpleasant. Had to handle female clothing. But it wasn't long until Frohas landed a job at Mad Magazine, and because he barely spoke a word of English, he developed a repertoire for being able to tell stories through purely visual means. Then later he had an amazing idea. Take some pointy characters, add some heavy influences from Rube Goldberg, mix in some subtle amount of Frohas's own views on international conflict, and you get yourself a not-so-secret formula for hilarity. And though the scare of communism eventually died down, the laughter has never stopped. It's a trap! And like every good spy story, this one includes a femme fatale. Grey Spy, or Lady in Grey's first appearance was in 1962. Unlike her male peers, whose entire head was composed of a triangle snout, Grey Spy's face and body are, for the most part, in normal proportions. But just like the boys, she has a rather twisted sense of humor, either dispatching both of the spies with a trap, or setting the two spies up to fight each other, which really isn't that big of an accomplishment, but uh, whatever bores is your Natasha. It's a trap! Again, while the appearances of white and black spy have remained unchanged for over 50 years, the gray spy's outfit has changed from time to time. <laughs> Women. You know if you look in their closet you'll find at least 20 pairs of shoe bombs. She's always worn the iconic spy hat, but has worn several different styles of dresses since her first appearance. But the usual consensus is a low cut top and a short skirt with high heels. And though she's always worn glasses, the frames have changed a few times, from pointy to triangular to round. And sometimes it's hard to tell if they're sunglasses or reading glasses. But the biggest change was the shaw, which was dropped from her look after only a few appearances. So occasionally the Spy vs. Spy feature turns into Spy vs. Spy vs. Spy, whenever Grey Spy made an appearance. And just like the other spies, her plans are ingenious. It's a trap! However, in 1965, 
Frohas decided not to feature Grace by in any more strips. He said she had changed the dynamic of the comic strip too much from its original premise. Two sides fighting a senseless and endless conflict, occasionally besting each other, but neither one coming out the clear winner. With Grace by winning 100% of her appearances, that aspect of the comic was lost. He was also afraid of having the comic being perceived as a conflict between the sexes rather than ideals. Now at a time when franchises were adding superfluous characters to increase their popularity, Frohas decided to hold back for the sake of his vision and dignity of his creation. It was a cock block, but one I can respect. But just like any good spy, Greg kept on coming back, even though the comic had only traded hands three times since Frohas' death in 1998. Each artist has sparingly made their own version of Spy vs. Spy vs. Spy. But really, can you blame them? I should note that Grey Spy has only appeared in the comics. Which is a shame, because I would love to have seen her animated. But we can all take solace knowing that the world of Spy vs. Spy isn't just black and white. It's also gray in shades. There ain't nobody spy like us. Hey, what do you say? Someone took your plans away. So what's all of us? It's a trap!